Good morning. And if the response is not very clear, I would say, Namaskar, Namaskara, Namaskaram, Vanakkam, Vandanalu, Salam, Jai Masiki, Praise the Lord, Hallelujah, Maranatha, Amen. By the time we could catch up with the moment of this conference, we have come to the conclusion of it. And after a while, we'll be all back to our own respective places, living and actually walking what we have been learning. And what joy it is for me to be part of this conference this year and to be ministered by the able servants of God who brought the word of God before us and also to have and enjoy the fellowship one with another. I'm sure, certainly we are all encouraged and edified and charged with that. Knowing the multiple responsibility upon me this morning and with the time on hand, may I draw your attention to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. With the theme of our conference, Walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. We come to the last and the concluding message in the plenary session and the subject for us now is to walk carefully. For which the handbook, I should really appreciate the brethren who prepared this. Every bit of information and the way they have put in all together, is so comprehensive and so excellent to the mark. For this topic, I will request you to please turn to page number 23 at the same time. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15 to verse 21. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And may the good Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Meditating on this portion of scripture, Dearly beloved, there are three things you can think about. Number one, the marks of a careful walk. Marks of a careful walk. Number two, the means for a careful walk. The means for a careful walk. And number three, the man of a careful walk. As far as the marks of a careful walk are concerned, the outline is given to you in the handbook. And each of these seven verses would correspond to seven marks that you and I should really remember when we walk with the Lord Jesus Christ into this world. Each verse has one mark given to us in this outline. And if you'll please turn with me to that, the verse goes on like this. A careful walk involves one to be wise, not living as fools, but living a life of difference. Verse 16 reminds us that a careful walk involves one to be watchful because the days are evil, living a life of discerning. Verse 17 tells us that a careful walk involves one to be will of God oriented in our understanding, living a life of divine direction. Verse 18 says us that careful walk involves one to be won over by the Spirit 
being filled with the spirit living a life of denial of self you can correct that as our brother sam rightly reminded to us not self denial but denial of self verse 19 says to us a careful walk is one which is to be witnessing to one another living a life of declaring his praise verse 20 tells us a careful walk involves one to be worshiping being thankful always for all things living a life of delight verse 21 says to us a careful walk involves to be walking in the fear of god submitting yourself one to another living a life of devotion why do i live these are the seven marks of a careful walk which are mentioned in the scripture why do i live a careful walk why do i walk a careful walk the study of that portion of scripture will remind us that it has an implication in our life a practical implication it will have an implication on your personal life on your family life on your social life on your business life and most of all in your assembly life if you want to see that great change in your life as our brother said to us trust and obey and when we trust in him and obey him and walk with him he will surely sh- shed that light in our path and we will really be great witnesses for the lord jesus in the days to come seven marks of a careful walk i wish i could talk about that then we have the second thing to consider in this passage the means of a careful walk how can one be able to walk a walk which is careful thoughtful mindful searching after our heart and helping us to live that life which really god want us to live and the key verse in this passage is actually verse 18 the means that god has given to us is not only being sealed by the spirit of god not only by being baptized in the spirit of god not only we are being brought into this beautiful realms and the help and comfort and support of the guidance and the leading of the spirit of god but above all the means that is given to us my brother my sister it is to be being filled by the spirit of god and each of this means which are mentioned here when you are filled by the spirit of god the outcome will be entirely different we who are men called by god should be experiencing that the filling of the spirit of god in our life if i had to take that as a subject i would have said there is a mandate given to us in that verse that we must be filled with the spirit of god the meaning is mentioned what is the filling of the holy spirit the mandate the meaning the means are also mentioned there and a mark are also given to us for a person who is filled with the spirit of god seven marks of a man who would like to walk a careful walk the means for us to walk a careful walk but i said the third one and i wish this morning the worship should have continued and we should have been pondering upon the man of all men even the lord jesus the man of our careful walk the lord jesus christ and this morning my dear brother and sister I would like to draw your attention to one who actually being God became man and came into this world and dwelt in our midst the heavenly one came into our habitat he lived like us but was without sin of whom the heaven opened and declared its pleasure time and again at least on three occasions this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and what a joy it will be for us to know that he who came into this world and walked a walk that was a very important a walk which was very significant that if you we want to have to walk with this lord jesus christ how careful you and i need to be in our daily conduct and life and that's why i want to draw your attention to the person of the lord jesus christ the man who walked a careful walk after all our theme is walking with him and how can we walk with him unless we know him unless we know how he walked when he was here 
unless we really notice the significant steps that he stepped in. Brother Jacob and Brother Jijo were teaching us that theme song and saying to us, walking in step with Jesus. Yeah, I was in the Indian Air Force and uh, while going for the parade and if we go, our step go out of the, if we walk in the parade out of step, you know what will happen? In that crowd we will stumble and fall. If uh, Zaki has to walk with his father Ben and trying to catch up every step to walk with the father, what a joy it is for you and for me. My brother, my sister, to walk with God, even our Lord Jesus Christ, the man of a careful walk. And I want to draw your attention to one verse found in uh, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. By doing justification to the passage that is before us, what does a careful walk really involve in? As we ponder upon the Lord Jesus, look at the, what this verse says to us. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. He that saith, that's what you say, that's what I say, that's what we say. We who are born again children of God, we say this. What? He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. If we abide in him, if we say that he is in us and we are in him, he is mine and I am his. I belong to him and he belong to me. If any man says he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Can we walk the walk of the Lord Jesus? Is that possible for us? It is not the literal path that you and I ask to walk, for that is impossible for us. But the principle behind the path of the Lord Jesus, when he was here, he walked those principles you and I can surely adopt in our Christian life and walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. After all, the whole epistle to Ephesians can be summarized in three little words. If you read chapter 1 and 2, it will address that first word, sit. Chapter 3, 4 and 5, We'll talk about the second word, walk. And chapter 6 will tell us the third word, stand. It is all that is comprising the three spares of the activities of every person in this world. Sit, walk and stand. And that's what the psalmist said, you know. In Psalm 139 and verse 1 and 2, he cried out and said, Lord, God, thou knoweth my downsitting and my uprising. You knoweth my thought afar off. There is nothing that is hidden from you. You know me, my path. You know me, my walk. You know me, my life. And there is nothing hidden from you. Where should I go from thy presence? Nowhere, nowhere can I go, God. And that's why in that Psalm 139 and last verse he cries out and says, How good it will be God if you search my heart, send the searchlight into my heart and know my thoughts and intents of my heart. If there be any evil, Lord, take it away from my life and help me to walk in the way everlasting. Sit, walk and stand. After all, when we consider the subject of our so great salvation, we talked about the First word that is sitting. Then we took the second theme of our walking and we said, walk worthy of your calling. We said, walk not as the world. We have seen walk in love. We also have noticed walk in light. As children of light. And when our dear brother was taking that workshop, he told us that we are supposed to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ putting on the whole armor which God has given to us. With that armor that is given for us, we can stand against every wiles of the devil that can distract us and lead us away from the simple walk, worthy walk, honored walk, walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Sit, walk, stand. Where are you sitting today? How are you sitting today? With whom are you sitting today? 
If you want to study only that subject, turn to Genesis chapter 18 and compare that with Genesis chapter 19 and you will find two fathers, two men who were sitting in two different places. Abraham sitting and Lot sitting. Compare that and you will learn very many lessons from that particular passage. That is not my subject for now. My brother, my sister, it is all concerning our sitting and our walking and our standing. And that's why how rightly the psalmist says to us in Psalm 1 and verse 1. What do we read there? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Are we listening? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Who is a blessed man? Who is a person who can walk a careful walk? That he is mindful how he is Walking, where he is sitting, how he is standing. And is walking or standing or sitting, he is mindful of that, that he should not be walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Young men and women, are you listening to me? Whose counsel are you taking today? Oh, how good it will be if we take the counsel of God. Psalm 119 and verse 24 will tell you, Psalm 119 and verse 24, I said, Thy testimonies are my delight, O God, and they are my counselors. They are my ministers. They are my advisors. Why I said young men and women? Because having have the, had the great heritage to us, not only parents, but grandparents and also great-grandparents, what advice and spiritual advice that comes down to us. How good it will be if we take those spiritual counsel and walk in the way that the Lord has called you and me to walk for. Blessed is the man. And that's what Psalmist is calling to us. How good it will be if you, you and I think this morning of whom he is talking about. If you read these first three verses of first Psalm, blessed is the man. Actually, it is referring to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other person who could be found doing those five things that are mentioned in verse 1 and 2. And if you and I have to walk that worthy walk, walk that walk which will please God, walk that will really honor God, walk that will really make a difference in our life, we are going to focus upon the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we have read in this verse that is before us in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. How did he walk? Who can tell us how did the Lord Jesus Christ walk when he was in this world? Each of those four evangelists who have given the account for us of the Lord Jesus in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they will tell you us how the Lord Jesus Christ walked when he was in this world. Look at what Matthew said first of all. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 29. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11 and verse 29. Matthew, who presents the Lord Jesus Christ as a king to us, Look at what words are written there for us. Matthew 11 and verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. He walked lowly. He was meek and lowly in heart. Dear brother and sister, when you consider this only one verse here, the Lord says to us, take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. If we have to walk a careful walk, we have to learn of him. He was meek and lowly. And did not we read the same thing in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 2 when we said walk worthy of the calling? We said with all lowliness of mind. Here is a man, the Lord Jesus, who was meek and lowly. Before you come to verse 29, actually you should be reading verse 28 because verse 28 is true with you and with me. And that verse is often quoted in the message of gospel. And we say, the Lord said, come unto me all he who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. In fact, that speaks to us about the cross work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He 
paid the penalty of our sin in his own body on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ died for our sins. Verse 28 draws our attention to the cross of the Lord Jesus and by faith in him, we have got rest in our life. Praise God for that. But verse 29, that same cross now is made which was horizontal, which was vertical. Now it is made horizontal. And did you notice there? He says, take my yoke upon you. Did you consider the yoke that the Lord has given to us? If you, have, you are the one who could say, along with Apostle Paul, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. Praise God for that. But Christ who lives in me. If this is true, if the work of the cross is true, the Lord says, take my yoke upon you. What do you mean by that, brother? Very simple. Dear brother and sister, he has already stooped down himself to that yoke. And he is already there under that yoke on the one side. And if you and I have to live a careful walk in this world, we have to just stoop down and take the other side of the yoke on our shoulder, on our neck, on our back. That as he walks, you and I can be able to walk with that lowliness and meekness of the Lord Jesus in our heart and our life. How good it will be. When you are yoked in the yoke, you know, if you have seen the oxen and the bullocks put, in, put under the yoke, if they are put under the yoke, one cannot go to the other side without taking the second person to the same side. Impossible. They too cannot go on two sides because they are yoked under one yoke. And if you say the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who has brought us under the yoke and you are there on the either, either side of that and he is there on the other side of it, it is impossible, it is impossible that you can be lofty, you can be proud, you can be haughty in your life and spirit. Impossible. The Lord said, take my yoke upon you for I am meek and lowly. How good it will be if this morning we just say, Lord, I am so sorry, Lord. I have taken myself out of that yoke. Now I want to put myself under the yoke along with you, Lord. How good it will be, my brother, my sister. The whole life will be changed. Our walk will be changed. Our priorities will be changed. A careful walk demands you and me to have this balanced life in us. And what is that? Not only to believe on the cross, which speaks about our salvation, but taking out the yoke, putting ourselves under the yoke with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? That speaks our service, our life for the Lord Jesus. By the way, if you consider that chapter 11 like this, did you know what we read in chapter 12? Oh, when I read chapter 12, those were the people in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ. They could boast about their pride and they could boast about their things and they could boast about their heritage and they could say, oh, we have a temple. They could say, we have prophets. They could say, we have kings. But in that chapter 12, you will notice in verse 6, he is the greater than temple. In chapter 12 and verse 41, you will read, he is greater than Jonas. In chapter 12 and verse 42, you will see that he is greater than Solomon. Oh, truest and greatest of all the priests, greater than temple. Truest and greatest of all the prophets, greater than Jonah. Truest and greater than oh, Solomon, the true king and the greater king, the Lord Jesus Christ. What I want to draw your attention to is this. Chapter 11, I read about his lowliness. But chapter 12, I read about his greatness. He was great as though, behold your king, is the cry about the Lord Jesus Christ. What may they do to him? Humiliate him, but he is the king. Behold your king. Truly he is greater in chapter 12. But in lowly in chapter 11, I see a perfect balance in the life of the Lord Jesus. When he is called to be greater in chapter 12, notice he is not drawing the attention of others to himself. God has made you great brother. God has made you, us, provided for us. Because we have taken the name of the Lord Jesus, we did not lack any good thing. But let not that which has become a blessing and a greatness in our life draw us away from the yoke that is called for us to be taken on our back and our neck and to walk with the Lord Jesus.
Let there be a balance in my life. Let not this greatness which I enjoy as a blessings of God become a curse in my life. He walked a lowly walk. He walked a balanced walk. And he wants us to walk the same walk in your life and my life. That lowliness of the Lord Jesus Christ is the first focus that we see in a careful walk. Walk with Jesus, but walk like the Lord Jesus. If you say you abide in him, you ought to walk in the way in which he also walked. He walked with a balanced walk. Let that balanced walk will be seen, could be seen in your life and my life. That's what Matthew presents to us. But when you look at Mark, Mark tells us that he walked diligently. A careful walk is a diligent walk. Because Mark, when he writes and presents to us Lord Jesus as the servant of Jehovah, you know what he says to us? Two words are repeated time and again. And immediately. And immediately. He was diligent in the work as a servant of Jehovah to do that was committed to him. A careful walk is not only a balanced walk, a lowly walk, but careful walk is also a diligent walk. Are you diligent in the things of the Lord? Or things of God and the things spiritual are becoming a burdensome to you? May I read a verse from the scripture? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Anything that you and I do in the name of the Lord, even this glass of water, Bible promises a reward for that. But today, if the spiritual walk with the Lord Jesus for the Lord has become burdensome to you, are you diligent about it? Are you careful about it? Are you after the spiritual things? Have you really given the spiritual things a second place in your life? A substandard thing, just a casual thing, you know. I feel sorry these days when I think about the spiritual atmosphere in most of the places where God privileges to go. You know what? Things have become just a spiritual entertainment for people. Ministry is a spiritual entertainment, you know. How that message will really soothe my heart and stir my body and help me to think good about myself. So sorry, my brother, my sister. As a minister of God, when men like me who stand here, you know what they would say? Lord, let not the professionalism come in my heart. We want to have the ministry of the word and truly a ministry from your word. Heavenly God speaking to people of God from the word of God that the spirit of God might encourage you and me to walk the walk that you, are, you and I are called for. It's a diligent walk. Don't give God spiritual things, assembly, a second standard, second place. No, give it first place. Because he was diligent. You say to yourself, I will walk a careful walk and I will be diligent hereafter in the things of the Lord, in the things spiritual, they will be first in my life. That's what was, with, was true with the life of the Lord Jesus. Number three, when you think of Luke writing about the walk of the Lord Jesus, and you know it, that Luke always focuses on one aspect of the life of the Lord Jesus, that he was very much prayerful. A careful walk is a prayerful walk. Seven incidents of the prayer life of the Lord Jesus Christ are written in the gospel according to Luke. A careful walk, I repeat, is a prayerful walk. Don't think prayer something very small. Don't underestimate that. The Lord has given us a privilege that we call on and God of heaven should hear us. What a privilege it is. You ask me and I will answer you. And I will tell you the things that you know not of. You ask, you knock, and you shall find and you should, you should seek and you shall find. You knock and it shall be opened for you. What a privilege that puny, tiny, futile words of man should reach, not dissolve in the atmosphere, but reach into the ears of God. He inclines his ear to hear our prayer. My dear brother and sister, let not the prayer life of our Christian walk with the Lord Jesus, a careful walk, 
be something very insignificant let us be like the lord jesus for he walked prayerfully let us walk prayerfully when i talk about it there are two verses that come to my mind will you please turn to luke's gospel just see the prayer uh, prayerful walk of the lord jesus let me highlight at least these two verses before you how did he walk prayerfully luke's gospel chapter 5 and verse 16 luke's gospel chapter 5 and verse 16 we read that and compare it with chapter 6 luke's gospel chapter 6 and comparing that verse with chapter 5 verse 16 let's compare with chapter 6 and verse 12 notice there two incidents of the prayer life of the lord jesus i was surprised when i was reading this chapter 5 and verse 16 yeah it says there and he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed chapter 6 and verse 12 he said and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to god yeah same thing in both the verses but did you read something prior to each of these two verses that we have read look at chapter 5 verse 15 and it says like this but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities and he withdrew himself into wilderness and prayed when did he pray when he his fame grew when he was well known in the land when people were appreciating him talking good about him when he became famous in our words he is seen to be withdrawing himself and spending time in prayer but compare that with chapter 6 and look at verse 11 and they were filled with madness and communed one with another and that what they might do to jesus and it came to pass he withdrew himself went to mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to god i like that you know whether he was famous i see him going for prayer or whether he became infamous if that is the right word he was still seen in prayer my brother my sister this is what will happen to you and me when we live in this world sometime people will speak good about you and you are so happy when they speak good about you but you are dismayed when they speak something bad about you that was not the case of the lord jesus how many because something bad is spoken about them something bad is written about them something bad is spread about them have become dismayed and discouraged in their life and they have left their walk with the lord jesus and they are no more walking with him let it not happen so when i talk about fame and defame there are so many things you have undergone i have undergone we are all victims of that but our lord was victim of that when he was famous he went into prayer when he was defamed by them he was still seen in prayer let us not be discouraged my brother my sister i wish i could enter into that and say about each of this topic lord jesus christ walk a lowly walk lord jesus christ walk a diligent walk lord jesus christ walk a prayerful walk and a careful walk is a walk like this if you and i have to follow the footsteps of the lord jesus in step with jesus let this attitude be also drawn in your life and my life when you look at apostle john and what does john will tell about the walk of the lord jesus how did he walk john will say only one thing repeatedly in the whole of his gospel you know what john whenever was with the lord jesus he was the one who was very close to him and he says always leaning on the bosom of the lord jesus he who was very close to the lord jesus he could always in the walk with the lord jesus could find out anything anywhere happened he would just write and the scripture was fulfilled and the scripture was fulfilled and the scripture was fulfilled he was just thinking about scriptures being fulfilled in the life of the lord jesus did we not remember in the time of our worship i have come to do thy will o father as it is written in the law of the lord that's what he has come and that's what he was doing that means john was telling about a careful walk is an obedient walk he was obedient son of the father in heaven he would never disobey father he was a obedient son that obedience is a walk which is a careful walk to be marked in our life are you obedient 
obedient to the word of god obedient to the commandment of of god obedient to the plan and purposes of god obedient to the precepts of god obedient to the ordinances of god are all these things have become just a namesake walk for you let it not be so when i say that i see many young children sitting here obedience is what is expected of us each one of us unto god the father but when i talk to children i would like to say like this because ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1 will have its implication mentioned there a careful walk walk with the lord jesus what does apostle paul say there is this children obey your parents in the lord for this is the first commandment with the promise oh what a verse that is what a profound verse that is children obey your parents are you obedient son to your father have you hurt your mother have you disregarded their walk and criticize them don't do that they have labored for you after all you are here is because of them they have given a birth to us and we are obliged to obey them for sure no doubt in that you know how many parents are having tears in their eyes today for their son their daughter not walking not being living an obedient life to god are you the one before you go out of this hall hug your mother hug your father and tell them daddy i'm sorry mummy i'm sorry this this hereafter i want to walk with the lord jesus as you walk daddy mummy i would like to walk with you with the lord jesus what do you mean by that you know parents are going to one local assembly and how can you and i not being content and satisfied we could go to another assembly don't do that my dear children you are such a talented group of god's people god has given such a heritage to you you can be a great blessing to your local assembly never ever disrespect your father and mother go along with them to the local assembly be a part of that assembly be active in that assembly when i saw this 12 15 young men coming today and ministering this thing my heart was really bubbling with great joy in my heart when you take your career do you consider your father and mother when you when you think of your life partner did you talk to your daddy did you talk to your mummy are they really happy about it did you pray about it did you ask the will of god about it are you taking all consideration if you have to walk with the lord jesus a careful walk we are talking about the lord jesus christ was obedient are we obedient i wish i could go on talking about this he who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk as he walked a careful walk all four evangelists would tell this four aspect of the lord jesus christ let me draw one more attention to acts of the apostles chapter 1 and verse 1 did you notice the walk of the lord jesus how it is mentioned in that verse luke uh, uh, luke writes in acts of the apostles chapter 1 and verse 1 somebody can read it aloud for me acts of the apostles chapter 1 and verse 1 did you notice that the walk of the lord jesus christ was something different you know he both began to do and to teach i want to underline that he began to do and to teach he was mighty in deeds and then he was mighty in words before he could teach he was doing he was practicing he was living it was a practical life of the lord jesus a careful walk is a practical walk it is not the talk that god is interested in god is interested if we are walking with the lord jesus he was walking the walk first then talking the talk next of what he was walking he began to do and then to teach and now compare that verse with chapter 7 and verse 22 chapter 7 acts of the apostles chapter 7 and verse 22 and what will you read there you know you will read about moses and what is written there is like this moses was a mighty man he learned the secrets and the skills in egypt and notice now he was mighty in words and in deeds underline that 
Moses was mighty in words and deeds. Lord Jesus Christ was mighty in deeds and words. Those two things are contrary to each other. There is something different emphasized in both of their lives. And what is that emphasized there? Something very important that you and I can really learn from. Moses was mighty in words and then in deeds. But Lord Jesus Christ was mighty in deeds and then in words. What, why that is mentioned like that? Well, I learn and I understand it like this. Moses, through whom what we got is the law. Lord Jesus, through whom what we got is the grace. Grace and truth has come through the Lord Jesus. Moses has given the letters, the law to us. What do you mean by that, brother? Still not understood. Tell us a little more about it. Listen to it then. John's Gospel, chapter 3 and verse 3 will tell us, except a man is born again, he shall not or she shall not enter or see the kingdom of heaven. That's true. But did you read Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 20? Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5 and verse 20 will tell you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. What is scribes and Pharisees? You know what? After being born again, the heads become heavy, the neck become hard, heavy-headed, hard-necked, people becoming like Pharisees and scribes. We know the scripture, we know God, and we can teach, we can talk, we can preach, we can do all those things. That's what Moses was, mighty in words. But what did the Lord Jesus Christ say? Ye whitewashed sepulchres, ye brood of wipers, ye hypocrites, he said, what all they say to you, listen and do it. But don't do what they do. Because what they say, they do not do. That are scribes and Pharisees. My brother, my sister, let it not happen to you and to me. In our heart and our head, let it be the Lord Jesus Christ ruling. How was he? He was walking a practical walk. He was doing and then he was teaching. That's what Luke is writing for us in that gospel. The whole account given to us in the Acts of the Apostles. And he went about doing good. May God raise a generation in you and me. We are here only for a couple of years, my brother, my sister. Let us walk with the Lord Jesus. But let us walk like the Lord Jesus. As he walked lowly. As he walked diligently. As he walked prayerfully. As he walked obediently. As he walked practically. Let me draw the next fifth one. As he walked meaningfully. When you come with him to that upper room and of which we talked so many times. In that upper room in John's gospel chapter 13 when you and I go there. What do we see there? Oh we know what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. And what was going on there. That is not my subject for now. But when after having done the washing of the feet and showing them all that they are supposed to do. The Lord said in John's gospel chapter 13 and verse 13. You call me Lord and Master and you do well for I am so. Then you go on reading those verses 14, 15 and 16. But come to verse 17. John 13 and verse 17 says happy are ye. If you do them. If you do what I have done. Where are those who will do this today? What is that Lord meant there is this. Do you mean what you call? I repeat, do you mean what you call? You call me Lord and Master, but do you mean what you call? We happened to go for an outreach. And in that outreach, uh, we were in a missionary bungalow. And I have repeated it again. I said it earlier. Let me repeat it once again. I saw a piece of paper lying in, lying in an old book. And I just like what was written on it. I stood standing there, memorized the whole because the paper was tearing apart. It was old book and old paper. And I could keep it there and memorize there. And the words on that paper were something like this. Do you mean what you call? You call me love. Uh -huh. You call me love. God's love, heavenly love, agape love, divine love. God pouring his love for sinner like me. You call me love. You sing about love. You talk about love. You preach about love. You call me love. But when I look at your life, you desire me not. I don't see a desire in your heart, in your life for this love. Listen to the whole list for want of time. You call me love and you desire me not. Next time, when you address him as love, think whether you are constrained with that love or not. 
you are governed with that love or not you are walking in that love or not you call me love and you desire me not you call me word and you read me not you call me giver and you ask me not you call me precious and you value me not you call me judge and a righteous judge and i see no fear in you you fear me not you call me coming and you wait me not and you call me lord and master and you obey me not and if i condemn you blame me not that's what the lord would like to say do you mean what you call may we examine our life and walk a walk which is pleasing unto the lord in closing a careful walk is a walk anticipating the coming of the lord jesus christ can we pray that prayer of a man of god who said lord stamp eternity on my eyeballs Lord stamp eternity on my eyeballs so that all that i see i might see in the light of eternity how good it will be brother sister the lord is coming he is coming soon undoubtedly he is coming brother has reminded to us we are waiting for the imminent return of the lord jesus are you prepared are you preparing are you girding yourself is there something that i should get rid of before he comes let us examine our life before we go out from this hall if there is somebody with whom our relationship is not right set it right meet him meet her hug him hug her and tell them forgive me brother forgive me sister let the humility of christ rule in your heart and my heart let us forget all that has gone by 38 years enough of that sickness we said it is a beseeching conference therefore i beseech you brethren that you walk worthy we are called for that walk with the lord jesus it is a beseeching pleading requesting don't go with high headed from this conference let us shed a tear before the lord let us say a prayer of repentance to the lord let us make a prayer of consecration to the lord lord in anticipation of your coming here i surrender my life to you and the rest of the days as long as you permit me to live here or you come and your coming is delayed whatsoever may happen Lord until I live in this world let me live and walk a walk which is worthy of your high calling she was a woman a wild woman a very bad woman man woman of a very bad character she had nothing to do with what's happening around her she sold her body and she earned her living but then she heard about god and her heart was gripped with the fear and the fear of god she heard about god her heart was filled with the fear of god and she learned the word of god and she found that god is blessing the people of god and she wanted one to be among them and not to be really judged by god then it happened that the spies who came to spy the land came to her place and as they came to her place she permitted them to lodge in her place and as they lodged there they did survey the land and they went back as they were about to go this woman caught hold of them and they said no 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 you cannot leave me you cannot go like this wait a minute i know god has given this land to you i know judgment is going to come on this land it's going to be destroyed i want a token from you i want a token from you except you give me a token that this destruction will not come to me and my family i will not let you go what did they give to her i am reading from joshua chapter 2 and they gave her a scarlet thread she took that scarlet thread and no sooner they left the place she tied it to the window and morning noon evening she would look at that scarlet thread and say to herself three things what was what were those number 1 somebody had been here that scarlet thread would tell her somebody had been here then secondly somebody has gone from here thirdly that somebody is going to return back once again somebody was here somebody has gone from here and that somebody is going to come back again tell me did that happen or not exactly like that has happened and what happened to her and her family she went to her family brought all of them under her shelter and the destruction of jericho was seen but rehab and her family were saved because she was occupied with the scarlet thread the three things what we have done just now is the same thing do this in remembrance of me this is the scarlet thread that is given to us 
week after week as we remember on the first day of the week the lord jesus we say the same three things but now we don't say somebody we say it proudly and lovingly lord jesus christ had been here lord jesus christ had been here he has gone from here but sure to he is going to come back again he is going to come back again he is coming for me he is coming for us walking with him in anticipation of his coming what a joy it will be for a brother and a sister are we walking a careful walk a meaningful walk a practical walk a walk which is anticipating the coming of the lord jesus let the church of god say amen even so even so come lord jesus shall we bow our head gracious god and our father we are so thankful to you for having brought us into this conference this year and making it a very significant one we who say we abide in him you told us that we might walk the walk that you walked give us grace lord give us grace to fix our eyes upon the lord jesus looking on to jesus the author and finisher of our faith for thy word says thou shall keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee as we part from this conference we make a decision before you lord in our heart a sincere consecration asking your forgiveness for what we could not do in the past but now we are determined to walk in step with the lord jesus even as he walked give us your grace and help may your blessings be upon every brother sister young and old until we meet again may the good lord be with us thank you for hearing in the name of our lord and our savior Jesus Christ we pray amen amen god bless you all